Hi everyone, this is Jess. I am back with a new video for you. This is going to be the updated version of my most popular video, which is um, how to do a realistic art, um, real digital art, sim the simple way to do it. Um, when I first created that video, it took off in a way I wasn't really expecting it to, and I've had a lot of questions about it since, such as why can't I download the free brush that I provided before and also what happened to the um, watercolour textures. So um, I'm giving you the 2020 updated version of that video and I thought I'd show you by doing a new drawing. This is just an example here of what I'm going to show you and the, and the kind of updated technique to that first video. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw something with pencil and paper. And for me, that is this little panda bear. Um, so you're just going to go ahead and scan it in your computer. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like my drawings to be kind of a little bit messy. And so go ahead and scan this. Okay, so that's that scanned. I've got it at 300 dpi on color, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab that. Okay, and we'll put it under pictures. Okay, and I'm going to call him Panda. Okay, so we'll scan that. Um, and then I will show you what I'm actually doing just to give you a heads up is that the watercolor brushes that I use now I have downloaded for free from um, Adobe using the uh, let's see one here uh, Kyle T Webster's uh, brushes and if you can look over here these are them there are tons of them so I'll show you my favorites but I downloaded the dry media the summer brushes, um, spatter brushes, runny inkers, watercolor, mega pack. And then I made a new file called favorites, which has got all of, you know, different brushes from these other packs that I've put together that are my favorite ones to use for my art. Um, and I will explain those in a minute. Okay, so we've scanned our picture, Panda. There he is. So this is the original drawing right here. As you can see that if you look really closely, there is some um, texture to the paper, which I really like. And I want to keep some of that texture in my art. So now we're gonna open it in Photoshop. I use Adobe Photoshop 2020. So we'll go ahead and do a new drawing. I'm just gonna make it a four by four inch. And it's at 300 pixels per inch and I'm going to keep it on RGB because that is the mode I want to use so that when you upload a JPEG to um, a website or social media, um, the colors are correct. So it won't come out neon colors. If I were to do it as CMYK, that is good for printing but not for putting on digital options. I also use RGB to create art prints, fine art prints as well. That's what my printer requires. So go ahead, create. Okay, so that's our basic paper. Now, what, the way I do things now is even more simple than the way I used to do it. Go ahead and add a layer down here. And then I'm going to open that drawing that I just scanned in. Find that. There he is. Okay, open that. Okay, so there he is. And I just say I'm using a Wacom tablet. It is the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. It's my favorite size. I don't like the large one. It's too big for me. I like the uh, medium. So what I'm going to do now, you can either grab it so that you're getting some of this texture of the paper as well. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, or you can just take the lasso tool and go around the bear. Okay, so Command C, and then on our new one, Command V. So as you can see, it's a bit too big. 
So I'm going to go to Command T and the new updated version of Photoshop took me a while to get used to it is that you don't have to hold down the shift key. It just stays in proportion. So, but if you wanted it to be in the middle and stay in the middle, you'd hold down your option key on a Mac and, and it would stay in the center. You see? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm also didn't draw this very straight. So go ahead and tip it a little bit. Um, that looks about right. Make him a bit smaller. Okay. Press enter. Now, as you can see, there's the white line and this is sort of a dirty paper look. So I do clean up the paper by going to levels, command L. And then I just go to the white eyedropper tool and I don't, in my first video, I really clean it up. I don't clean it up as much anymore. I like this texture. So I just see how it's still, you know, it's still got a bit of, I just clicked up here to the, you want to find the lightest point on your art. So if I were to click here on the dark part of the drawing, you obviously you wouldn't want to do that. So you go to the very lightest part of your art and you keep clicking around until you find your sort of happy, cleaned up medium. Uh, I think I like to see a bit of that texture paper. So that looks good to me. Then sometimes what I do is I go over here to this uh, black arrow and I just move it over and you can kind of deepen. If you can see that you can deepen the color if you want to, this is entirely up to you. So you can deepen that pencil line a bit more without losing the texture of the paper. Okay, so I'm gonna press okay. That's how I like the drawing. I'm gonna label this down here, this layered drawing. And I'm gonna change it right here to multiply. What that does is it turns it into basically tracing paper. So that any layer I put on top or below, below or above this layer will show through. For example, now we're going to add the color layer, new layer, I'm going to call this color, but I'm not going to change this, it's going to stay normal and I'm going to drag it underneath. Um, if I had left this color layer above, I'll just show you, random pink, um, get a brush. If I left that above the drawing, it covers my drawing, so obviously I don't want that. And just to show you, if I if I just take this now, this layer, and put it underneath the drawing layer, you can see that the drawing now comes through. So I'm just going to leave the color layer underneath the drawing layer. And before I used to add a texture to the whole paper, I don't actually do that anymore. I just use the texture of the actual drawing that I've done. Um, but if you do like that look, everybody sent me lots and lots of messages saying, the texture's gone, and you're right. Adobe got rid of it in the normal pattern area. So if you want to add um, more texture, this is another option for you to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shift. I'm gonna make two of these just to show you. Um, link. Okay, I'm gonna turn off these. Okay, if you were to go Command G, now I've grouped both the drawing and the color in this group. This is just to show you as an example, another way you could um, add layer mask. So go ahead and do that. Now go up to edit, there we go, and fill. And what I would show before is that the pattern here, you used to be able to go in here and find all these different artist surfaces and now they don't show up here anymore. That used to be a toggle here and you'd be you'd find them and you can't find them anymore. So what you do is you go um cancel out of here, go to uh, window and down to patterns. Okay, so just ignore these patterns. These are ones I've made myself. That'll be another video for another day. These are the ones they come with, trees and stuff. They're really awful. I don't know why anyone would use these, but um, anyway, you can go to the, these little, this little menu here on the right and then go to Legacy Patterns and More. And what that will do is it will bring it up here, Legacy Patterns and More, click on that. 
and you can find all the old art surfaces. And the ones I used to use are artist surfaces right here. And my favorite one was this one, which is gauche light on watercolor. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go to edit, fill. The pattern now should be here, it's under pattern. Yep, legacy patterns. Legacy patterns, and then artist surfaces. Okay, this is the gauche light, okay. There we go. Now it's obviously too drastic. I need to turn my background on. Um, so we click on that gray box, go to levels, command L. We just bring this right down a bit. You can't see the pattern right now before I've put the color on, but basically what it would do is if I got a bright color here and went on to color, there is now, I'll find one, This that's that brush isn't a very good example because it has its own texture. So we'll go to a brush that has no texture. But you can see now that there is a texture there. Do you see there is a texture? The only thing I don't like about this texture is it's too uniform. It's all the same. Um, but you might like it. So if you want to use that, there you go. That's how you find it. So I hope that answers that question for everybody who asked me that. But for today's purposes, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you the simple way of doing it, which is just using brushes. So drawing and color. We're going to go back to color. Okay. Now, um, the first thing I want to do is I'll show you my favorite new brushes that I use. So I really like this one. I probably use the most for doing character color. It's called Kyle's Re Real Watercolor and if I hover over this round robin brush tool. So you can find that in the watercolor pack. Um, and these are all free from Adobe. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is go for kind of an off cream color for my little panda bear. And got that. Okay, and then just start coloring them in. That's a bit dark. Okay. Let's try again. There we go. And this brush has an opacity to it, so any texture underneath is still going to show up. And this particular brush is already set to multiply whenever, and I want to add color on top of it now. So, but I'm going to bring the opacity down because if I don't, it's just a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring the opacity down a little. Maybe a bit more than that. I'm going to make a little bit slightly grayer tone and then build up the colors. So I've decided that the light is coming from the left side, so the shadow is going to be on the right. And as you can see, I'm not doing anything, it's the same color, I'm just building color. So this is the watercolor digital. Um, effect that I use every single day to illustrate children's books and, and children's um, art, kinds of art. So there's my little panda bear, it's his basic color. Now I'm going to give him a grayish blue. Okay, still same brush. I think I'm going to go full opacity now. His little ears. All right, and tail on his feet. So that's quite blue. So now I've got that color in, I'm actually, oh, I've got his eyes. There we go, and his little nose. I'm gonna go with a dark gray now, not dark gray, but literally no color. And again, building up on to the right side for the color. And the thing I really like about this brush, if I zoom in, is these wet edges. Ugh, 
It's like real watercolor and love it. So I stopped using the brush that I had made before because I just really fell in love with these brushes and there's just so many more to choose from. I still don't use very many. Probably two or th one or two <laughs> maximum, unless it's a really big piece of art and it's very complex. I like to keep it kind of simple. So that's that. Give him some cheeks, some little pink cheeks. There we go. Okay, so that's the basic color for him. We'll go ahead and color his little daisy. And I'm gonna give off white here. This is just not perfect, obviously. I'm just trying to show you quickly how I do my digital watercolor art, 2020 version. And remember, you can do it however you want. And I just want you to explore with all these different, really fun things to use. Alrighty, so uh, I think we'll move on to the bumblebee. I'm gonna give him slightly brighter yellow. Ooh, come on. Okay, I'll try that again. Okay. Again, building up the color as I go down for some shadow, and I'll give him a little brown face. Okay, my brush more again. I'm going to bring the opacity down a bit and then do fluffy lines. Okay, little legs. Okay, so there you go. It's kind of the rough way I like to do it. Um, color in his little wings. All right, now, um, before I do too much else, uh, I'll, I'll do the flowers real quick. I'm just obsessed with watercolor because I love, I love that look. Um, real watercolor and digital watercolor. But digital watercolor is just considerably cheaper. <laughs> so there we go, we've got some little clovers there. So this is, I like the sort of messy look that this is giving me, um, but if you would like to blend it a little bit, then I really like this one, it's Kyle's Real Watercolor Soft Edger One Smudge Tool. And it's at 55, which is too big usually always for everything. So I'm just going to reduce the size of it a bit. And then just sort of blend this in a little. Maybe not everywhere. There we go. We don't want to blend it so much that you can't see that it's watercolor. But the thing I love about this is that you've got the original pencil drawing and you've got watercolor that really looks like watercolor. As you can see, it's like, it's great. So that's your basic there. Um, another brush I'll just show you real quick. Get on another layer. This is what I would call background. And you keep it underneath your color layer because I want the color layer on top because I just want it in the background. So the brush I like to use for that is this one. Um, Kyle's Real Watercolor 500 Giant Brush Tool. So, you 
when I get it a bit smaller because it's huge. And then I'm just going to go with like a blue and make just a little accent color around the bee, little bumblebee here. And see that how it does like these rough, rough edges. Now, this is something important. As you can see, everywhere that was white on the bumblebee, because I didn't color it with um, a brush that is 100% um, just thick, like it's got an opacity to it. Now you can see the blue come through. So what you have to do is go back to color, change this to white, and then put your brush on multiply. It doesn't really matter what brush it is. Just any brush is fine. And go over the top of your color. I'm gonna put it a bit smaller and then see how you can just fill in over the top of your color. I actually like to have a little bit of a white showing as well. It's kind of cute. There we go. So now the color pops a lot better. Okay. So that's what you would do in that situation where the blue is kind of seeping through. Okay. So there you go. There's your bumblebee done and there's a little bit of blue. This was a rush job. But what another thing that I like to do is outline my work. So you don't have to do this. You can just leave it as a pencil drawing. But I like to do one more layer, which I'll put above drawing. And I will call it outline. And I'll change it to multiply. And then I go to my last brush that I will show you that I really like for outlining is Kyle's Drawing Box HB Pencil Pro 15 Pixels Brush Tool. And then I, it's at 15, but I always put it down to about nine and I change it to multiply. And I don't like it too strong, so I'll put about 60. And pencil color, I usually always like a brownish gray. There we go. Zoom in a little. And that's when you could like highlight his eyes a bit, his nose. I'm even going to make that smaller, put it at 7. And then I wouldn't do, um, I wouldn't go over the top of every pencil line. I would just go over, I'm going to actually put 100. Bit bigger. It takes a while to find the exact right pencil size you want. There we go. Don't go over all of it, just some. So it's just basically, um, giving a little bit of an outline to some of your drawing. Don't have to do it everywhere. You don't want it to look too crazy. But as you can see, you can still see this texture, which is kind of cool, I think. Add a bit more to his nose. And then maybe on the flower, I would outline a little. Um, and then you continue around the bear, um, but definitely I would do this guy to give his eyes a little pop, his little antennas, around his wings. And it would also help to kind of make his body look a bit more furry. His little legs. So it's really, it's got a lot of texture, this brush. It's kind of rough, which I like. Boom, boom, boom. And his little face. Okay. And then I, I'm going to do like a little bit of a, I'm going to go over there. And then I'm going to erase a bit of this drawing. There we go. Okay. Maybe I wouldn't do it down there. Maybe like that. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, and then I would just continue to do around the little panda's body down here and all the way around. So this is just kind of a quick, easy drawing. 
to show you. And then this has been my mantra here lately. I'll go back to my watercolor brush. I just wanted to add a little message at the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on another layer. Put it on multiply. B. Kind. So that's my thing right now. So yeah, maybe I would make that a bit smaller. <laughs> I just command T to make that smaller. Okay. And that's, that's basically how I did it. And this is the one I did originally. Obviously cleaned up a lot more, but that was kind of to show you rough and dirty how to do it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. You just basically, it's very easy now. You just, this would be your B kind. So I like to have things on separate layers to keep them organized. An outline, if you want an outline, but the most important two things are your drawing layer and your color layer. The drawing layer stays on multiply, the color layer goes below the drawing layer, and that is on normal. You can see right here, normal, multiply. And then just go through the brushes that they offer on Adobe, the Kyle's brushes, and test them out. Try them all out and, and then make a new folder for yourself. Just right click, control right click, um, and make a new folder. Call it favorites and put all your favorites in it. Uh, these are mine. There's a bunch of these here. Um, I also really like this pastel. It's really pretty. Um, that's Kyle's Dry Media Pastel Soft Square. So, anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I'd love to see your artwork. Please follow me on Instagram at Jess Bertram Illustration and Facebook at Jess Bertram Illustration. And don't forget to subscribe. And in the comments, please, if there's anything you want to learn, let me know and I'll try my best to get to them. Okay, thanks guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.